Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, thank you for watching. We've got a lot of ground to cover and as should have um, been obvious, the title caught your attention and I thank you for taking the time to uh, join me in this presentation. So we're going to be discussing raspberry ketones with a lot of um, undertones, if you will, no pun intended, uh, in regards to a plant-based diet versus a ketogenic diet. Now, I like the idea of using raspberry ketones because the fact that it contains the word ketones. In fact, I did see an article that really kind of um, debunked the idea that raspberry ketones have any relation to ketones. Well, in this video, I beg to differ, but it's not just my begging to differ. I'm going to pummel and bury that um, keto-biased mindset with some heavy, hard-hitting research. And you guys will be, you know, you'll be glad to see it as I present it. Now first I'd like to show you this first schematic here of the, um, the molecular structure of ketones, raspberry ketones, if you will, and they're, and they're actually similar to capsaicin, which is found in cayenne pepper, which is highly thermogenic and fat loss boosting, if you will. And we know raspberry ketones are a very common ingredient in supplements, but I'm not talking about using the supplements. I'm talking about actually eating foods that contain raspberry ketones, as you will learn in this video. Raspberries are not the only food that contain raspberry ketones. And there's a lot of um, implicating connections with raspberry ketone and the, foods, the food sources that contain it. So obviously cayenne pepper it, it has a similar structure to raspberry ketones. It kind of supports the fat loss benefit. Now this first uh, study here I want to kind of highlight is the known um, increase in adiponectin that was found in raspberry ketones in this particular study, okay? I went ahead and highlighted it in, uh, in red for you. So raspberry ketones increase the expression and secretion of adiponectin, which is a potent adipokine that's, um, you know, that's connected with fat loss and, 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 and also health benefits. Now, this next slide is a postulation that, and I've talked about the AMPK pathway and how it's uh, connected with autophagy, which is, I'm bringing, I'm going to show you that this is all connected, but basically ketogenic diets are really promoted for being, you know, promoting this pathway as well as, um, you know, autophagy and fat loss and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, raspberry ketones do all of that without the side effects, as you'll see later with FGF21, which I've mentioned in previous videos. You'll see. But basically here, the, this researcher postulates that you know, considering the effects of raspberry ketone, the expression of genes involved in lipid metabolism, such as all of these that follow, uh, which are actually, these genes are also actually connected with the AMPK, AMPK pathway. He postulates that there's a need to investigate whether this AMPK pathway is involved in the raspberry ketone alterations of lipid metabolism. And as you will see later, I believe that it is. And, and I'm actually going to kind of be impressed with this statement and I think it is related and I think future studies will, will, will validate my statements that I just made. Now, that's one pathway, but here's the thing. We know that raspberry ketones boost adiponectin. Well, here's a study showing that adiponectin actually induces autophagy and as we understand, AMPK also is related to signaling autophagy, right? So it looks like raspberry ketones signal autophagy through adiponectin. Now, that strongly suggests that it's also um, connected with AMPK. So here, it, it obviously shows that, you know, it's, it stimulates autophagy, which has obvi obviously has benefits on, on insulin sensitivity by reducing insulin resistance. Now, here's a connection between adiponectin and AMPK. It says that these results indicate that adip adiponectin in inhibits, you know, the LPS primed inflammasomes activation through via autophagy induction and AMPK signaling dependent mechanisms. So autophagy in a lot of ways is dependent on AMPK. Well obviously adiponectin induces autophagy and autophagy is, is connected with AMPK. So more evidence to suggest that raspberry ketones do in fact uh, are involved in this AMPK signaling. Now let's go ahead and take this further. I've talked about FGF21 this study here talks that it well mentions that it induces autophagy. Okay. Now, here's another study shows that the FGF21 adiponectin connection. Okay, so FGF21 enhanced the expression and the release of adiponectin. 
Therefore, adiponectin, it actually synergizes or couples with FGF21 and it mediates the benefits on energy metabolism and insulin sensitivity. Now, here's another study uh, where it's shown or postulated that a vegan diet of modest protein content increases FGF21 levels, okay? Now, ketogenic diets are primarily uh, focused on increasing glucagon and reducing insulin levels and so forth because you're basically, you know, it's, it's glucose restriction and so forth or car and carbohydrate restriction. Well, here, I've mentioned this, that it is proposed that plant proteins can preferentially stimulate glucagon, and this is based on their amino acid composition. In other words, dilute plant proteins, right? They have low essential amino acids, which as you, as, if you've been following my videos, Dr. Rhonda Patrick mentions that essential amino acids actually inhibit autophagy. So plant proteins are not high in essential amino acids, thus they actually indirectly boost autophagy. Um, and so FGF21, and it's related to glucagon. So again, this is all fascinating stuff, guys. Now here's, here's the showstopper. Here's the, the, the big study. A ketogenic diet impairs FGF21 signaling. Okay? Now, yes, ketogenic diets can boost autophagy and, and these other aspects, AMPK, that I've been mentioning. And they actually have been shown to boost FGF21. In fact, I believe some of the research that I read shows that it does boost it. However, it impairs it. It impairs its ability to operate correctly. And so the conclusion in this study is that, that a ketogenic diet could be beneficial for given tissue, but deleterious for another. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a catch-22 or a, you know what I mean? It's kind of a, a little paradoxical. You get some benefits from keto, but you're also going to get a catch or a caveat. And that's something that, you know, that the ketogenic community and really the research doesn't really acknowledge and for various reasons. But that being said, um, this study obviously, you know, indicates that. So, and in regards to raspberry ketones, as I've mentioned, it's, they're, they're not just found in raspberries. They're also found in blackberries, cranberries, kiwi, peaches, grapes, and grapes are actually high in resveratrol, which is a, uh, a, a potent um, caloric restriction mimetic, which also ties in with this whole, it's all connected, guys. It's tied in with autophagy. Apples, other berries, vegetables such as rhubarb, and even coffee. Now, here's the crazy part about coffee, guys. There was a study, and all these studies would be down below uh, in a video description for your, for your convenience to navigate. Coffee, there was actually one study from 2007 actually found coffee has trace amounts of raspberry ketones. Can you believe that? Now, we know in this graph here, the schematic, that coffee is a potent inducer of autophagy. And this study illustrates it. it, it it's, it's, it's a catalyst or a, a, a signaling of the AMPK pathway, which obviously leads to, which is you know, strongly connected with autophagy. And so, um, you know, could it be that this trace amount of raspberry ketones in the coffee is, 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 is part of this autophagic benefit of coffee? And by the way, it's caffeine independent, which is really cool. And Dr. Rhonda Patrick um, and her uh, guest, distinguished guest, talk about how even decaf coffee can do, induce autophagy, which is related to polyphenols, uh, which leads me to my final, final point here in that Dr. Furman had an, a cutting edge article where he actually wrote an article looking at a nutritarian diet and he, and he um, put it up against a ketogenic diet. And he talks about how ketogenic diets have benefits, but they also have caveats. And that article will be down below for your, uh, for your, uh, you know, for your convenience to view it. But essentially, um, a, a nutritarian diet stimulates similar, it stimulates very much the same pathways as a ketogenic diet but without the catch and the caveat of high insulin resistance and so forth, and also losing the ability to properly handle glucose. So in other words, we're actually going to become less metabolically flexible. Now, acutely in a ketogenic diet, we may enhance metabolic flexibility because people are basically burning just carbohydrates and you're, you're eating processed carbohydrates, not actual whole food plant-based carbohydrates, which is different because they are higher in fiber. Um, and polyphenols actually, which actually act as carb blockers. So all of this is connected, guys. Um, I could keep going, but I'm going to go ahead and just end it here. Um, I want to also add that in Dr. Furman's article, he does mention that a ketogenic diet restricts 
health promoting foods and nutritional variety because quite frankly a ketogenic diet is extreme it's extremely low in carbohydrates which in a sense is in direct common sense opposition of the word variety when you're extreme right so yeah I mean and so basically we can attain these ketogenic benefits without actually being in ketosis which is really remarkable stuff and um, and I hope you guys can you know take that and I've done other videos on, on, on the ketogenic diet okay um, I think enough future video could be the NRF2 pathway which is an antioxidant uh, based pathway I will actually uh, I'll consider making a video on that uh, it's just too much to cram it in this one video but essentially I think I've covered enough ground to uh, to really make a, a, a solid case for um, for really the consumption of raspberry ketones and here's the thing I'm gonna end it with this so I believe that fruit is not very is not a very common or highly consumed food on a ketogenic diet because obviously the ratio of sugar to uh, carbohydrates right uh, vegetables have low sugar fruit has higher sugar I've made a video about fruit doesn't make us fat and it depends on the fruit we eat and so forth but by and large fruit has more anti-obesity mechanisms than it does pro-obesity the only pro-obesity is the sugar which of course can be amplified by drinking fruit juice instead of actually eating whole fruit uh, but that being said raspberry ketones actually are one of the highest fiber fruit in existence and I've done a video on good versus bad carbs and I use raspberry ke uh, raspberries they were actually they had the best starch to fiber ratio I think they had like 12 grams of carbs 8 grams fiber are you kidding me that's 4 grams of carbs net impact carbs so the irony is yes raspberries contain raspberry ketones and as you see in this schematic here they also have other benefits so maybe it's other things too the synergy of the other anthocyanins which we've talked about as being potent fat loss um, substances all this synergizes in the raspberry now raspberry ketones are not ketones but what's crazy is people who are on ketogenic diets should probably be eating raspberries on their ketogenic diet because in my my best estimate my guess it probably wouldn't knock them out of ketosis because raspberries are so low in carbs because of the high fiber content and polyphenols have been shown to actually uh, inhibit carb absorption so you've got a double edge whammy with inhibiting carbohydrate absorption with the polyphenols and the fiber of the raspberries so perhaps keto keto supporters would probably start eating raspberries because not because it's raspberry ketones but because they actually are a ketogenic mimetic all right you guys this is the last thing um, just to bring it all together and tie it all together so we have on the left here of the schematic that I actually devised uh, raspberry ketone which is in raspberries and other fruit as I mentioned in this video but mainly raspberries so if you look it increases adiponectin okay uh, now adiponectin is connected to autophagy it increases autophagy now AMPK it's AMPK dependent in other words AMPK increases the potency of adiponectin so you could see how that so in other words it increases adiponectin's ability to induce autophagy all right and you can see how that's indirectly linked to raspberry ketones and so forth um, and raspberry polyphenols um, they increase FGF 21 and raspberries have a, a, an abundant amount of polyphenols and that study will be down below and I'll, I'll go ahead and have a graphic right after this from that study um, FGF 21 increases autophagy adiponectin improves the effectiveness of FGF 21 so really it's not just about what well, it is about raspberry ketones but in, in in a nutshell raspberries also have polyphenols that also um, have a, a pathway towards autophagy so as you can see this is a really fascinating um, and, and so basically mimetic means it mimics in other words it mimics a ketogenic diet because a ketogenic diet is basically um, you know it's predicated on stimulating AMPK FGF 21 and autophagy all these pathways that have to do with fat burning um, but what they don't tell you is the insulin resistance from having high levels of intramuscular fat and also high levels of free fatty acids so fat burning is a science and we always think fat burning is good and it is but there are situations where we could actually blunt the ability to burn sugar and we need to be able to burn sugar that's why we have glucose tolerance tests and so forth so it's bigger picture guys 
And so hopefully this video was, uh, you know, was, in, was enlightening for you and insightful. And if it got you thinking, that's great. That's the whole point. Because uh, we're all in this together and we're all trying to, you know, improve and learn and get better. So with that, uh, thank you guys for watching. Tune in next time.